What's going on everybody? In today's episode of Behind the Uniforms, these ladies flew from across the country to come visit and tell their story. Let's roll that open. I do not know you, but I am your brother. You do not know me, but I am your protector. I will run into a burning building to save your life. Though I do not know your name, I will take a bullet for you. Though we've never met, I, I believe, believe in, in duty, duty and sacrifice, sacrifice of self. self. Your, your family, family is my family. Is my family. Your life is my duty. All right, everybody, for those of you who have never seen this before, the way that we roll is this. We invite first responders, veterans, active, retired, and sometimes friends, family, and supporters on to bring a bottle of whiskey, share a cocktail, and tell their story. Now, today's gonna be a little bit different because it's nine o'clock in the morning, and I don't think you guys are up for drink. I'm not up for drinking whiskey at 9 a.m., but why don't you tell everybody, first of all, who you both are and what you brought. I'm Pam Matt. I'm Terry Keeney. And we run the uh, nonprofit organization called Helping Heroes Fly, based in Colorado. And um, when I asked my son to recommend a whiskey, a Colorado indigenous whiskey, this is Tin Cup, and he said that this was the one that I should bring. So when I looked up this whiskey, what I thought was really cool and sort of fitting about it was that it's sort of a, a throwback, a tribute to the old miners with the tin cup and, right. and with the recipe, and it really represents hard work and dedication. And that was something that the reason that I asked you both out here to, to fly out into me on the show is because you have created an amazing organization with nothing other than bootstrapping it and your hard work and dedication. So the irony of that wasn't lost on me. Why don't you guys tell everybody, uh, well, first of all, why? Where'd the idea come from? Why do you do what you do? Okay, well, honestly, um, I don't come from a military family, but I had my eyes wide open when I have a friend, her son um, is in the Army, and just in conversation, I said, so does um, Devin get to come home for Thanksgiving? This was two years ago. And she said, no, he can't afford it. And I said, what do you mean he can't afford it? And that's when I learned that our troops are paid at poverty level for the first couple years of service. I could not believe it. And the more I talked to people about it, the more it was confirmed. And, you know, I was shocked, and then I was mad and then I was sad, and I just couldn't believe it. And for a month, I said, if I can do something about this, I'm going to. And, um, you know, for a month I said that. And I looked into starting a nonprofit, and it's a lot of um, government, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, ironically, my daughter was cutting her daughter's hair and happened to mention um, what I was thinking about, and she said, um, her daughter said, you ought to have her call my mom. So I did, and we went to church together, so I already knew her. Um, so then I met with Pam, and her son was in the Marines. And so she knows all this firsthand. And so she was like, yep, it's true, and yep. And um, she was the wheels. She was the wheels that, um, you know, an idea without wheels is a dream. Yeah. And so she brought the dream to reality. And I, we hit the ground running and in nine days, paperwork filed, bank accounts open, credit cards filed, you know, the whole- You were messing around. We were not messing around. We, you know, she said, let's do this and she made it happen. I love so. it. Well, yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, we got together initially and she said, what do you think? And I said, I think we can do it. And so we decided we'd take a few days and pray about it and see where we ended up. And we kind of just said, yeah, we need to do this. So love it. Tell me more about your son. Um, he was in the Marine Corps. He, uh, Sergeant in the Marine Corps, he was in from 2006 to 2010. He's now back in Colorado with his wife and two kids. And, uh, and I have a firefighter daughter that was in your, one of your videos. Wait, really? I didn't even make that connection. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. I love it. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned from, we spent a lot of time earlier this year down in Georgia, uh, a lot of buddies who were in the Army, guys went to West Point, and one of the things that, that they mentioned consistently was that a lot of these guys get married young simply because they don't make any money right. and because they're, you know, they come from a military background and the most effective way that they can support their families 
is by coming together and getting some of those benefits. Like, how crazy is that? Yeah. That the men and women who serve and protect our communities and our country, not just in the military, but uh, we see this with a lot of rookie oh, yeah. cops too, they can't afford to make ends meet. And so they rely on, you know, support from family and friends and working second jobs or working startup companies on the side just to be able to fly home for the holidays. Like, that is yeah. insane. It's sad. You know, 1% of the population serves our country. 1%. They're special. And we don't pay them enough to get home to see their baby be born. Or, you know, lay, tell their mom goodbye before she, she dies. You know, lay grandma to rest. And it is an honor. It, it is, is a privilege to be able to help them get home to do that. And they are grateful. I mean, we get some of the sweetest thank you notes. And, you know, we helped... Um, a person get home to um, lay his dad to rest and you know we get that request a lot it happens a lot and we were happy to do it and we bought the ticket it was you know cross-country and it was expensive last minute and we a couple days later got an email from this person and he said you know I just you don't know how special it was to, for me that you did that um, I hadn't talked to my dad for 20 years. We had wow. just started yeah. speaking, and um, he passed. And wow. for me to be able to so. get home and, you know, get that closure and see my family, it was special. And so, you know, it just it means a lot to them, and we're just so honored and grateful that, you know, we can do that and that we can get dads home to see their babies be born. And yeah. it, it is heartbreaking to me that that is a struggle and it's, a, it's an unknown need of our troops. Most people still think, and I was one of them, they get everything for free. Sure. Sure, they, you know, they, but the military probably flies them home for that stuff. Right. You know, it's not true. They don't. And it is a struggle. They don't make a lot of money. And out of their little um, paychecks, you know, people think they get everything for free. They pay for their meals. They pay for their uniforms. It's insane. Yes. You guys take a very, very tiny percentage out of all proceeds just to we cover do. your administration. Like an unheard of percentage. <laughs> thank you for mentioning yeah. that because not only did I want to thank you for having us on and doing this, but I wanted to let you know that um, this trip did not come from donor dollars. Um, I want anybody who supports us and anybody who's thinking of supporting us to know that we. Um, this was on our own dime. <laughs> what percentage do you guys pull? Well, <clears throat> we had always said when we started this that, um, number one, we would never use more than 10% of donor money for operational expenses. And last year, it was right around 3.5%. Um, That's we, unheard of. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's important to us that we can just have that much more money to be able to buy even one more ticket. Um, you know, our dollars are stretched pretty tight. You know, we do the best we can with what we've got. And right now, I think I just figured out this week, actually, that we're right around 4% of all income That's received nuts. right now. Well, you know, we unfortunately, we had, to, uh, we had two fundraisers that were fun, and they were great, but we ended up having more expenses. So gotcha. Um, this year may not be quite as tight, but we're going we're gonna to keep them low. So you know what's a really, really cool way of raising money? by asking everybody that's watching this <laughs> to contribute. Um, but not only that, so I just decided that every year we have a big blowout Christmas party. We invite clients and friends and family and we just provide you know food and booze and everything. Dottie from Brown Sugar Catering usually uh, hooks everybody up. So instead of doing it like that this year, we're gonna sell tickets and every penny goes to you guys. Oh, to the cause. you're so. kidding. Oh, that is Thank so, you so awesome. Much. So in the meantime, you guys can all help. What's the website? Shameless plug, go. Healthingheroesfly.com. And awesome. listen, this has been a humbling experience. We have had to ask for everything, so you know what? <laughs> well, you guys didn't ask us for anything, so this is the Thank least you. that we can do. So. Thank you, that, Thank you that is so, much. so awesome. No problem. Guys, take two seconds to hit share on this video. Let's change some lives one at a time. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. So God bless America. God Fabulous. Bless America.